The land of the artificial and glorious, one of the largest achievements in the UAE is the man-made islands in Dubai. With luxurious hotels, wild aquariums and dream beaches, these archipelagos are tourist spots unlike any other. A hallmark of the city's progress and beauty, these islands in Dubai are a highlight in both the city's growing property market as well as the tourism industry of the Emirate. So in this video, we're going to discuss how artificial islands were made in Dubai. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. By 2016, oil is believed to be finished in Dubai, hence thrashing its economy to the ground. Dubai must find a new source of income. The Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum devised a $2 billion plan to save his country. His vision was to turn Dubai into a number one luxury and holiday resort. He has a history of getting done what he wants. He has spent the last two decades working to turn his city into a world-class tourist mecca that can survive without petrodollars. It's not easy to add hundreds of miles of coastline to a crowded city, but that's exactly what Dubai did by building the islands. The question that may often pop up in your mind when you think of these gorgeous man-made islands is how all this became possible. Creating an island from scratch is not something most places in the world would consider a normal activity, but Dubai has never restricted itself to normal. These islands were built through a process commonly known as land reclamation, which involves manually raising the height of the seabed. In the case of the man-made islands of Dubai, sand gets dredged out from the floor of the Arabian Gulf bordering Dubai, after which it gets sprayed on the sea. An ambitious project by Dubai-based Nakila Properties and the first of the Palm Island developments, Palm Jumeirah was one of the most highly anticipated real estate projects in the world at the time of its launch. The world's best engineers were needed for the project. Search for experienced professionals led to Dutch, who increased Holland's land by 35%. They were booked and were to prove first of all that it was built to possible a megastructure island out at the sea. The strength of storms in the sea was to be calculated and also the rise in water level due to global warming was taken into account. The research team worked out that the Arabian Gulf is only 160 km wide and only 30 meters deep, hence too short and too shallow for catastrophic waves to build up. To keep this fragile island safe, the breakwater was to be constructed having a height of up to 3 meters and 11.5 km long. 1,200 foreign engineers were put to work. Workers used a dam to drain the area and excavate the seabed before re-releasing the water. A monorail that runs the length of the palm opened in 2009 and is the only public transportation option on the island. These engineers had previous experience with Hong Kong's International Airport, Singapore's Industrial Center, Holland's North Road, and other renowned megastructures. But no one had reclaimed a structure this size of shape before. Palm Jumeirah was created from 7 million tons of rock blasted from the nearby Al Hajar Mountains. More than 94 million cubic meters of sand were dredged from the bottom of the sea to form the island. As per reports, the sand and rock used to construct Palm Jumeirah can form a 2-meter high wall that can circle the Earth three times. Engineers used satellites that were guided by a high-tech GPS that helped spray the sand into the perfect place with pinpoint accuracy. Viral compaction, a technique used to make the soil particles denser, was also used so that the island could withstand any construction on it. Over a hundred studies and intense planning were carried out for laying the foundation of the Palm Islands. The various aspects such as transportation, civil engineering, and technology were extensively analyzed before they were built. Also experienced divers examined the stability of the rock formations beneath the water. The total cost of the construction was reported to be $12 billion. The main idea behind construction, the curved rock breakwater or crescent was to withstand a 4-meter tidal wave a potential risk in the area in winter, and to promote a natural reef system to increase biodiversity around the palm. The crescent is built from the bottom up with first sand, then geotextile fiber, followed by small rocks and then medium-sized rocks. Divers were employed to examine the placement of rocks underwater to ensure correct positioning. A six-lane sea tunnel built using 200,000 cubic meters of reinforced concrete, 30,000 tons of reinforcing steel, and 110,000 tons of rock connects the trunk to the crescent. 25 meters below sea level. To build the tunnel under dry conditions, two 1.2 kilometer long dikes were constructed to form a dam. More than 5.5 million cubic meters of seawater was pumped out in just 45 days, with around 2,000 fish caught and relocated to prevent them from getting trapped inside the drained space. In the case of the man made islands of Dubai, sand gets dredged out from the floor of the Arabian Gulf bordering Dubai, after which it gets sprayed on the sea. An ambitious project by Dubai based Nakila Properties and the first of the Palm Island developments, Palm Jumeirah was one of the most highly anticipated real estate projects in the world at the time of its launch. Meanwhile, the dikes were later used as temporary roads for construction vehicles, construction workers lived on the fronts, and in anchored cruise ships while building the island. Designers at Nakil have maintained that villas 
barely 10 feet three meters above sea level, would be safe from the rising seas of global warming. Some sources have claimed that the islands are sinking into the sea, but Nakheel denies it. Some environmentalists also have claimed that the construction of the islands harmed the area's marine environment. They criticized the development, saying that rocks and sand buried oyster beds and coral reefs and altered currents eroded the mainland shore. The Raven Gulf is rich in marine life, from varieties of shellfish to corals, crabs and fish. Two F-100 Super Saber fighter jets were stripped and sunk near the Palm Jumeirah to create an artificial reef to promote marine life, which also acts as an underwater attraction for recreational divers. The man-made island offers world-class and sophisticated facilities. It's the home to a luxury-themed hotel based on the underwater lost city of Atlantis and a fun-filled aquaventure water park. Tourists and residents can enjoy an ultimate gastronomical experience with a plethora of high-end restaurants, popular bars, and trendy cafes. Not just that, the island offers plenty of relaxing outdoor areas. The 11-kilometer broad walk stretches along the exact length of the Palms Crescent, featuring several food trucks and jogging trails with a scenic view of the open sea and the Dubai Marina on the other side. The 300-meter bridge connects the crown to the mainland, and the underwater tunnel connects the crescent to the top of the palm. Currently, Palm Jumeirah is packed with villas, hotels, and attractions. Hotels are built on the trunk of the palm, while homes are on the fronts. Buyers are a mixture of long-term residents, vacationers, and speculators hoping to cash in on real estate. Around 80,000 people live in Palm Jumeirah, though it's projected to hold 120,000, and it's a popular tourist site. To facilitate tourism and make life easier for residents, a six-lane subsea tunnel connects Palm Jumeirah to the mainland. Workers used a dam to drain the area and excavate the seabed before re-releasing the water. A monorail that runs the length of the palm opened in 2009 and is the only public transportation option on the island. New resorts are still opening on Palm Jumeirah and developers are financing and building luxury apartments. Dubai can definitely leave you awestruck. David Beckham and Shah Rukh Khan are some of the celebrities who own homes in Palm Jumeirah, a district known for its swanky hotels, active nightlife, and sumptuous restaurants. For those searching, there are a number of residences and apartments available for rent in Palm Jumeirah. The Palm Jumeirah Island has now gained international recognition as a sought-after residential and leisure destination in Dubai. It's also home to one of the most luxurious hotels in the region, Atlantis the Palm. The island even became officially known as the world's largest artificial island back in 2007. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below about Dubai's transformation in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we'll be back soon with another video just for you guys. Until then, take care, stay safe and be happy.